At four years old, Jackson Cantrell was an explorer. He was Pirate Jean Lafitte on a mission to smuggle in goods. Or when he was feeling playful, he was Indiana Jones on a hunt for the Crystal Skull. I chalk it up to my mother showing me Indiana Jones when I was about three years old, so maybe a little bit too early, but um, uh, I, I don't know, I've just always found it fascinating, and um, I'd come out to the park all the time when I was a kid. His mother, Leanne, says his imagination was endless, and history is what really made it spark. He asked to go to the Chalmette Battlefield at the age of four. Um, since then, when they opened the World War II Museum, um, he asked if we could please get a membership there. So from World War II back to the Battle of New Orleans to all sorts of other historical events, he's just really, really been interested. Cantrell was already an explorer in his own right, but this park, the Fountain Blue State Park in Mandeville, it was a whole new adventure to uncover, and it started with a conversation. Greyhawk Perkins, who would later be Jack's mentor, told him the history behind this land. The large oak trees and the brick ruins told a story that was hidden by time, a story Jack desperately wanted to understand. And he would. About maybe when I was six or seven years old, I uh, ran into one of the rangers here, uh, Greyhawk Perkins, and we got to talking. Uh, I don't know, I've just always been a history buff, and um, he asked me, so Jack, uh, what do you think was that Alley of Oaks was for, since Von Blue's famous for it. And um, I said, uh, oh, was there a big plantation house? Because normally when you see Django Unchained or Roots or anything like that, uh, there's a big plantation house at the end of an Alley of Oaks. And he said, no, that's where the enslaved cabins were. That information changed everything. Jack thumbed through plantation records and census from the 1800s to learn everything about this place. If he didn't know, surely there were others just as clueless about what happened here. It took a decade to find out who these people were, and what were their names, and what they did. He found that 153 slaves lived in cabins under these oak trees. Hurricanes and flooding eventually rotted them away, and that's what kept the history in the past. But to him, that wasn't a reason to leave it behind. And that sort of blew me away. Because normally, you come out to Fontainebleau State Park, you see wedding photos taking place, weddings themselves taking place, um, baby showers, people having birthdays. And I was sort of disappointed that people didn't know about all the history that was really here at Fontainebleau. So he made the history of this park known. He put up a plaque directly in front of the Alley of Oaks. It gives a brief history of the people who lived here. And on the other side, he pays homage to his mentor, Greyhawk Perkins, with another plaque explaining the history of Native American tribes that also walked through Fountain Blue. But this was more than just an explorer on an adventure. It was a labor of love. It started with my brother Cole. Um, like I said, he's got significant autism. And over the years, I would see people treat him with disrespect. Um, and he doesn't really have the ability to advocate for himself or defend himself or anything like that. So I was always off put by people who were, you know, detrimental to those who weren't able to fend for themselves um, or didn't have the right to. And that's sort of, I guess, what really drew me into Fontainebleau, really. In a way, Cole represents the people in Fontainebleau who weren't able to speak for themselves. Digging up their lives and putting it on display gave them more of a voice that they'd have never had otherwise. Anyway, we're gonna get y'all loaded up and uh, have fun on the water. So Jack is continuing his deep dive into untold stories. He gives bayou tours and explains the history of the land to people from all over. He'll be going to Florence, Italy to study this summer before he heads to Florida for his first year of college. He's accomplished a lot at a young age and his mother says this is only the beginning. Well, those who know him, his teachers, uh, his scout leaders uh, respect what he has done, um, not in his own name, but in the name of just being a good citizen, being a scout, um, just being a good person.